Listen, we're in a series that we simply titled Genesis. The title of this message is To Be a Victim or Not to Be a Victim. And we're gonna talk about what it is to be victimized and have a victim mentality. But we're gonna start in Genesis chapter 50, verse 14. This is the story of Joseph. If you don't know the story, I'm gonna give you a little, real, real, little uh, recap. Joseph was 17 years old. He was his father's favorite. His, he came to see his brothers. They were out tending the sheep, doing something. And they said, we're gonna kill him because they were jealous of him. And then his older brother said, let's don't kill him. Let's sell him into slavery. So at 17 years old, imagine 17 years old, he gets sold into slavery by his own family. And then he became, uh, and Potiphar bought him. Potiphar was one of the greatest people in all of Egypt, one of the highest authorities. He could do anything he wanted. He could have anybody killed, whatever. He was that guy. And so Joseph goes into his house. Uh, the Potiphar sees that everything he touches is blessed, makes him the manager over all of his estate. And then his wife, Joseph must have been a pretty good looking dude because Potiphar's wife looked at him and wanted him and desired him. And she tried to seduce him. And when Joseph said no, he ran out. She grabbed his garment. He ran out butt naked. And, and, and then she screamed and said, he tried to rape me. He was unjustly accused, went to prison. And if you listen, study it out, they believe between two and 10 years he's in prison. I think it's closer to 10, but anyway. And, and, and so he goes to prison and it was all unjust. How many of y'all know that's a victim? But he never developed a victim mentality. He was victimized. So let's pick it up in verse 14. After burying Jacob, Joseph returned to Egypt with his brothers and all who had accompanied him to his father's burial. But now that their father was dead, Joseph's brothers became fearful. Now Joseph will show his anger and pay us back for all the wrong we did to him, they said, and they did him wrong. So they sent this message to Joseph. Before your father died, he instructed us to say to you, please forgive your brothers for the great wrong they did to you, for their sin is entreating you so cruelly. So we, the servants of the God of your father, beg you to forgive our sin. When Joseph received the message, he broke down and wept. Then his brothers came and threw themselves down before Joseph. Look, we are your slaves, they said. But Joseph replied, don't be afraid of me. Am I God that I can punish you? You intended to harm me, but God intended it all for good. He brought me to this position so I could save the lives of many people. So no, don't be afraid. I will continue to take care of you and your children. So he reassured them by speaking kindly to them. Now the victim mentality would have taken its vengeance. It would have said, you did me wrong, now it's my turn. Now dad's dead, We're gonna get, I'm gonna get you. But I want you to hear these words again. You intended to harm me. There are people, things in our lives that are intended to harm us. But God, everybody say, but God. So no matter what's said to you in a, in a statement or a sentence, when someone says but, everything they said before it means nothing. What they're really wanting to say is now after the but. But God intended it all for good. He brought me to this position so I could save the lives of many people. A victim mentality is a pattern of thinking that if you do not change it, will keep you stuck. If you have a victim mentality, you will see your entire life through a perspective that things constantly happen to you. It causes you to see most things in life as negative, beyond your control, and as something you should be given sympathy for experiencing as you deserve better. In other words, people should give you sympathy because you deserve better. The victim mentality always talks about what they deserve, what they're owed. At its heart, a victim mentality removes personal responsibility from the uh, equation by believing you have no power, therefore you don't have to take action. In New Mexico, Charlie Kirk said, and I thought it was intriguing, he said, you're not the most ungodliest state in America, that's Oregon, but you are the most pagan state in America, and I believe it. People worship all kinds of crazy stuff. In fact, they worship the government, which is pagan. But the two spirits that I know that prevail in New Mexico are the poverty spirit 
and the victim mentality spirit. It is something that is over our state. It is something that so many people have bought into, even believers, they can't get out of it because you always talk about, you always minimize your portion and maximize everybody else's. And we can be victimized. We can be victims of circumstances, but we never have to possess a victim mentality. In other words, any bad thing in your life is other people's fault. They're the ones that are bad, wrong, or dumb. And you are good, right, and brilliant. Other people do bad and stupid things, and you suffer as a result because that's what a victim mentality says. And here today, we're going to start breaking that spirit in our lives. Because as believers, and I'm going to say this again later, as a true believer, you cannot be a true believer and carry a victim mentality. You have to break it or you will not be a true believer. You can't. It's impossible. And so you, you, so this victim mentality always sees themselves as minimizes what my part is and maximizes everybody else. I'm smart. They're dumb. They're the reason. I can't get, I can't get up because the man is keeping me down. People, if it wasn't for people, I'd do better, no. It's a victim mentality, and we gotta break that, that, that stronghold in our thinking. A victim mentality arises when one constantly sees themselves as a victim, often feeling powerless and at the mercy of extended forces. That's what a victim mentality is. This mindset can manifest as self-pity, bitterness, or resentment. And if you have those things, then you're not walking in forgiveness. And if you're not walking in forgiveness, you cannot be forgiven. The victim mentality would say, they did me wrong. I just can't forgive them. Yes, you can. Why? Because God said you need to. You have to. Well, I just can't do it because you have a victim mentality. Listen, all of us in here have probably been victimized in some way. I remember when my wife and I moved to Roswell, America, our house was broken into three times. Well, two times, and then once it was almost broken into, and we, we were happened to be there. But we got home, someone had broken in, been through all of our drawers, they, they took all of our like video equipment when you had video cameras, and, and, and all the videos my wife had taken of our kids since they were babies. And it was heartbreaking. She felt violated. She felt unsafe for the first time in her life, because we lived in part of the ghetto of Roswell. That's the only house we could afford when we started pastoring. And someone came in there and violated us. We called the police, they came. I said, man, we don't know what to tell you. They stole my brand new Nike tennis shoes that was gonna make me run faster and jump higher. <laughs> but we were victimized. Another time we came home and our sliding glass window was just shattered. One night we were awakened in the middle of the night. We heard our water faucet turned on in the backyard, the hose. And I went running to the door to look and there was a Reese's peanut butter cup. They ate a Reese's peanut butter cup while they were standing in my backyard. It's right there by the water thing. So we shut off the water and thought, man, they keep coming. I came home from a football game when I officiated high school football here in New Mexico. I came home and I was walking. We had a carport, we didn't have a garage. And, and I'm walking and all of a sudden, man, this Doberman Pinscher comes flying up at my fence in my face like, and barking like crazy. And I'm like, when did we get a dog? I didn't even know we had a dog until that moment. And a, and a buddy, a guy from the church, felt bad for us and brought a Doberman Pinscher over to our house, so we called it our DNA dog. <laughs> and say, what's a DNA dog? If you're in my backyard, we will get a blood sample. <laughs> we will find out who you are. And so, you know, and it was so, this dog was so mean, and I didn't raise it, so it was full grown. It was a girl, it was named Mariah. And so, anyway. When I, would, when, I would, when I would go out in the backyard, I would bring E.L. Fudge cookies with me. Two story, and I would give the dog an E.L. Fudge cookie and he'd leave me alone. But if I went through the gate, he would come after me. I had to go through the house. And, and, and it prevented, we didn't get broken into anymore, but let me tell you something, we were victimized, but we, were never, we never developed a victim mentality. And when you have that victim mentality, it ruins everything. Joseph, despite being sold into slavery, falsely accused, and imprisoned unjustly, never adopted this mindset. He trusted God even when the circumstances looked bleak. 
See, there is a crucial distinction between a victim and a person possessing a victim mentality. I want you to hear Romans 8 in light of what I just read in Genesis 50. Romans 8, 28. This is my life verse, if you would. This is the, probably the scripture I meditate on as much as any scripture in the Bible. And we know, we don't wonder, we don't have to think about, we know that God causes everything to work together for the good of those who love God and are called according to his purpose for them. If you believe that, you cannot possess a victim mentality and believe that because if you have a victim mentality, you don't believe that at all. You can't. And so today we're gonna break it off some of you. And we need to, we need to share this with our friends and family because it's so, there's a spirit in New Mexico. And you, you know, I have people tell me all the time, and this is how I feel. When I leave New Mexico, I feel free like, oh. As soon as I come back into New Mexico, it doesn't matter if I fly in or whatever, I almost feel oppressed, like, oh my gosh. There's not a feeling of prosperity here. You go to some other states, there's just a sense of it. People do things, and you know, I was in a place, and people leaving their cars unlocked, and I'm like, don't, you got, I mean, I'm telling you, you gotta lock that. <laughs> don't, don't leave your bag in there. They'll look and break in. I mean, they, you, they just think, they're like, where are you from? I said, from the People's Republic of New Mexico. What the heck? <laughs> But you know, we all think like that. Someone sent me a, a meme of a guy in Florida. He walked by and said, I miss home. And, and he said, I miss my home, Albuquerque, New Mexico. So the guy broke into his car, stole his radio and said, I hope this makes you feel more like home. <laughs> See, life does present us with genuine challenges, doesn't it? Come on, everybody can say yes to that. Some of you have been victimized and and been victims of circumstances and people and things, and some of us face adversity, trauma, or injustice. Being a victim means that you have suffered from a particular situation or action. How many of you say, I've been there? Like most of us. However, possessing a victim mentality is an ongoing internal state of mind where one feels perpetually victimized. Joseph was an innocent victim, but he never adopted a victim mentality. He was victimized, sold by his own brothers that he loved. 17 years old, can you imagine? He's a kid. And from the time 17, then he was 30 when Pharaoh exalted him and God used him. See, we need to beware of moving from being an innocent victim to adopting a victim mentality. Jesus said it this way in John 16, 33. I have told you all this so you, that you may have peace in me. Here on earth, you will have many trials and sorrows. What will you have on earth? But take heart because I have overcome the world. In other words, he's saying you're going to have issues. You're going to be victim. You're going to have stuff. But don't worry about it because I've overcome all this. If you walk with me, you can overcome. You don't have to be a victim. And here's why I'll say this again. If you have a victim mentality, it will be very difficult, if impossible, for you to be a believer. Because here's why. Because the victim mentality at some point will blame God. God, if you love me, this wouldn't happen. He just said it was going to happen. It has nothing to do with him loving you. It has to do with the way the fallen world is in the life we, and where we live. But people are always blame God. God could have did this. God could have did that. It's because you have a victim mentality and you can't serve God and have that. That's why most Christians walk away or people that get saved, they walk away from God. At some point, they walk away because they're hurt and mad at God. Like, what did God do bad to you? Joseph could have had that same mindset. God, what's wrong? I was serving you. You gave me these dreams. And look what my brothers did. And God knew what they did, but Joseph had the right heart, the overcoming spirit, if you would. Yes, I was a victim, but I'm not, I don't have a victim mentality. What you intended, my brothers, for evil or bad, God intended for good. Whatever you face in life, God can turn around for your good and his glory if we believe and know. That all things work together for good to those that love God and call to his purpose. Yeah, but you don't know what I'm going through. It doesn't matter if I know or not. God can turn around if you, and, and use it. You can learn from it. You can grow from it. Yeah, but I was just a little girl. I was just a little boy. I know that, that you were victimized. But don't you carry that victim mentality. Don't you let them victimize you the rest of your life. At some point, you've got to break that and forgive them and let it go and move on. See, the scripture acknowledges that in this world you will have struggles, but it also empowers us to overcome through him. If you have a victim mentality, number one, you're only focused on yourself. Everything goes through the lens that everyone is an actor in my ongoing play, 
And it's how everything affects me. It's me, it's me. How you did this to me, you did that to me. Number two, you have ongoing pain. When something happened so long ago, but it hurts like it happened yesterday. And then it, if you're not careful, it'll hurt worse than it did when it really happened because now bitterness is set in and, and, when it, and, and so it's even worse than when it first happened. Because when you have that victim mentality, you will be bitter. You see everything as negative. There's nothing good. And nothing's good enough. And people can't do enough for you. Here in the church world, and you know, when I started pastoring, I didn't know a lot. I thought people were all good and nice. I really did, because I, I was always good and nice to my pastor. I never badmouthed them ever. I just, I just appreciated them. I respected them. And I wasn't some wishy-washy person that jumped from place to place either. It just, it's just amazing to me. That's a victim mentality. Well, I'm going to go over here. I'm going to go over here. I'm going to chase this. I'm going to chase that. It's a new, improved stuff. Stop it. You just hurt yourself. You just keep uprooting yourself. That's why you don't grow. And the victim mentality is, is one in which you how, do you, how do you believe in God and blame him at the same time? And a victim mentality will always blame God. And so when I start pastoring, we start helping people, you know, from time to time because we could. And some of the people we help the most as a church are the ones who left and got mad at us and would say, you didn't do enough. I'm like, well, we didn't owe you anything, but we took care of this bill, that thing, that thing, this thing. We bought you an engine for you. We did so much, but it was never enough. And I used to think, what's wrong with these people? They're not appreciative, they're not thankful because when you have a victim mentality, you're never thankful. And when you have that, no one can do enough. That's what happens in marriages. People get, in, get married, have a victim mentality, and it's always their fault. They did this, they did that, they did this, they did that, they did this. And it's never mind. You minimize your own faults and you emphasize everybody else's faults and you exaggerate them. That's why it doesn't work with God. Jesus is teaching us to be an overcomer. He said, you're gonna have problems. Anybody here have a problem? If you didn't raise your hand, you got a problem with lying. <laughs> and number three, if you have a victim mentality, you're always stuck in the past. No hope for the future. Well, the reason I, I'm like this is because of what happened to me when I was whatever. My teacher, my m mom, my dad, my friend, my whatever. And I get it. There's real pain. I'm not talking about there's not real pain. And you may be a victim of some horrific things, but you do not have to adopt a victim mentality. And you know you have it when you only see the negative. I'm sure we had 1,783 women here over at Spire, and I'm sure somebody is going to complain. Well, I didn't like this, and I didn't like that. Instead of seeing all the women that got set free and blessed and saved, you know, they'll always, well, I think they should have did this. Yeah, because you're not doing it. And most people, when they have a victim mentality, they only think of themselves. They don't think about the other 1,782 women. And you got to do things different when you have those kind of crowds. But someone can always find fault. I've worked at not trying to find fault all the time. People ask me about speakers because I'm a speaker. They say, I, I said, I'm just not critical of them. I think if they get up here and they try, they're okay. I mean, they could get better. You could develop. But man, you know, I'm, I, just, I, know it's, I know everybody thinks it's easy to do this. And, and we see it even with the people that do our tithes and offerings. They, it looks so easy, and they get up here, and then they go, uh. And now it's, 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 a, it's a developed skill. You, you, you learn. And I've watched guys get up here, and the first couple of times they were nervous and lost their thought, and then after that they just flow. Like JP, he just does a good job at it. There's quite a few that do a good job at it. There's a lady at East Campus. She's as funny as funny can be. She just makes me laugh. Uh, and then, then you, when you're laughing, you just give more money. It's like, oh. <laughs> and most of the people that stand up before you are volunteers. They're not, we don't pay them. They just believe in the word of God. And this is part of their service in serving God. And, uh, but it's not always easy. The fourth thing that happens if you have a victim mentality, you become paralyzed. Because you're not working on it. You're not learning from it. You're not trying to move forward. All you can do is talk about what happened yesterday, and you can't see that there's a today and a tomorrow that you can look forward to. The victim mentality distorts our view of reality. It always does. We tend to see things through a negative lens. 
we magnify the bad things. No matter how good something may be, we can and will find fault in it. So we tend to see things through a negative lens. We magnify the bad things that happen to us and attribute them exclusively to people and forces outside of our control. We lose our perspective on reality. It also blinds us to our own sins and our need for a savior. A victim mentality magnifies the harm done to us and minimizes our own stuff, our own in, in, injustices. After all, we reason our sin is nothing compared to what others have done to us. And that's the victim mentality. I know I did wrong, but you, I know I did wrong, but you, you did, all, you were worse. And if you've heard that in an argument, that's a victim mentality just screaming out of that person. Because whatever you did is always worse than what they did because they minimize their own fault, their own responsibility. They can't stand to think that I'm the reason this is not working. So they minimize the harm done to them, our own stuff, our own sinfulness. After all, we reason our sin is nothing compared to what others have done to us. Victim mentality disempowers you. It sucks the joy right out of your life because we are not thankful. That's why it does it. We're not thankful for our blessings. And it endangers relationships. A lot of times when people have victim mentality, they don't have great relationships, so their relationships are sketchy. And a victim mentality always wants you to agree with them, and when you don't, you're the bad guy. You know, I learned this a long time ago. Pastor Tommy Barnett just influenced in my life, and we're just talking. And he made a statement years and years and years ago to me. He said, Steve Smotherman, my friends don't have to be your friends for us to be friends. And he said, I want you to know your friends don't have to be my friends for us to be friends. And I thought about that over the years, and I use it all the time. And I tell pastor, people that I meet, I said, look, we can have a good relationship, but you just got to remember, my friends should not have to be your friends for us to be friends. And your friends don't have to be my friends for us to be friends. Because that's healthy relationship. You may like some, well, I can't stand that person. Yeah, but they ain't done nothing to me. Yeah, but don't you know, they did it to me, and how can you like them? That's a victim mentality, screaming, screaming. How could you be around them? You don't know what they did to me. Yeah, I know, but they didn't do that to me. And so many people say, well, if you're going to be friends with them, we can't be friends. What a sorry attitude. It's a victim mentality part of your life that ruins relationships. I know people, and I have good relationships with people, that they like other people. I don't like them, so I don't, I don't care. They're not my friends. But the guy that, or the person next to me is my friend, and they can have any friend they want. It doesn't affect our friendship. And a victim mentality is always getting people to agree. Don't you agree? They did me wrong. Don't you agree? And when you look at them, like, oh, I don't know, man. I think you had a partner. No, I didn't. How can you say that? You're not even my friend. You don't love me. And that's what's pervasive in New Mexico. It's one of the strongest spirits in the state. That's why we have the leaders we have. Because people are so victimized and have a victim mentality that they vote in, the oppressed always vote in their oppressors. We could be one of the greatest states in America to live, but the people in New Mexico refuse to be great. You know why? Because people will give up all their freedoms to feel safety and be taken care of. That's what they say. Well, we don't like the Republicans because all they care is about is money. And the richest people in America are Democrats. What? All you gotta do is read. And on both sides now, it doesn't matter what side you're on. People will give up their freedoms just to be taken care of. Look at what we did. We gave up our freedoms for two and a half years to a tyrant over a sickness that, was a, that, that wasn't a joke. It was a real sickness. But they should have never did what they did. And we did it for what? Safety. They're trying to protect me. No, they weren't. They were trying to destroy you. We were the experiment to how far will America let it go. And if you want to be free, free in your heart and mind, free in life, then you're going to have to fight for it. Because freedom isn't free. And people don't want to fight for it. Well, just take care of me. Just give me the money. I don't care. I'll be your slave. No, I'm not being anybody's slave. 
That's what a victim mentality does. I just want to be taken care of. I just want to feel safe. I want to be free. I want to be free to worship God the way I want to. I want to be free to go where I want, drive where I want. I don't want anybody to tell me. I shut off all the things that where people couldn't track my phone because they said they were going to track you because you could only go to three places in a day. I'm not, not me. I went to 10 every day. I could care less what they said. And, and it's just crazy how we just give up our freedoms in America. Do you know what Hitler said when he took over Germany? He said, if we can disarm them, we can take them over. What does that mean to some? Take all their weapons. And what are they doing now? Trying to take away all of our weapons so they could what? Control us. They can overrun us. That's why in America, we better cling to the Second Amendment. We better cling to the First Amendment. We better cling to all the amendments. But most of all, it wasn't America or the politicians that gave us our freedoms. It was God Almighty who gave you freedom, and you're going to have to fight to be free. And it's a fight. Paul says it's a good fight of faith. You're going to have to fight with the Word of God to become free so you can think different, be different, act different, be more godly. See, the Bible never promotes a victim mentality. If someone had a right to adopt a victim mentality, it was Joseph, or how about Job? Job, man, I mean, can you imagine God talking to Satan? God said, where you come from? Oh, I've been walking around the earth. He said, hey, have you considered my son Job? He goes, oh, yeah, but you've got him protected. You've got a hedge of protection. I can't get to him. Then Satan said, I bet if you took that hedge of protection down and I go after him, he'll curse you and die. And God said, really? I mean, can you? He, he, <laughs> he's negotiating with Job's life. And God said, you know what? I'll tell you what, I'll, I'll remove the protection. You do with him what you will, but you can't kill him. In moments of time, he lost all of his family, all of his children, all of his resources. He lost everything. A servant would come and say, hey, your son's dead. A servant would come and your daughters are dead. A servant would come and you lost everything. We lost, I mean, he lost everything. And he sought God. He cried. He's like, God, what's happening here? And then he got sick and he got boils. He just got, I mean, just painful. His friends came against him and said, just curse his own wife. Curse God and die. Job, what's wrong with you? You must have sinned so badly that this is happening to you. And Job had to, through all of the relationships and everything, he had to say, no, I believe in God. And God finally said, where were you, Job, when I created the heavens and the earth? Where were you? When I made this, where were you? And we were nowhere, folks. God knows best. And until we understand that, you will never be able to walk with him the way you desire to, ever. We got to break these strongholds in our thinking. And Joseph and Job could have been the greatest, had the greatest victim mentality, and no one would fault them, but they didn't. Job believed God. I always laugh when people tell me, I'm just like Job. I'm like, yeah, I've been going through some bad stuff. I said, really, how long? Years. Well, then you're not like Job. You're like you. Because Job only went through it for about nine months. And then God restored everything. And he got a better wife. He got his family back. He got all of his riches back. God blessed him more than he'd ever been blessed because he didn't curse God and die. You know why? Because he never developed a victim mentality. He stayed a conqueror. Joseph was a victim of his brother's jealousy. They wanted to kill him, but instead sold him into slavery. Then as a slave was falsely accused by Potter's wife and thrown into prison, anywhere from two to 10 years. He was 17 when sold into slavery, 30 when he was released and promoted. If anybody had a right to have a victim mentality, it was him. But Joseph was, he was truly a victim, no doubt. He was a victim, but refused to adopt a victim's mentality. Genesis 50, 19 and 20, let me read it again. But Joseph replied, don't be afraid of me. Am I God that I can punish you? You intended to harm me. They did intend to harm him. But God intended it all for good. He brought me to this position so I could save the lives of many people. What is God bringing you through so you can help more people? It's not just about you. It's about the people you influence, the family members, the people you're around. And if you can't handle the trials and sorrows that we all face in life, we all face them. 
We've all been victims of something. But it doesn't mean I have to have a victim mentality, and that's a whole other thing. These verses can change everything if you believe them. If you are stuck in a victim mentality, if you are trapped beneath the weight of things that happen to you, you can be free. Here's what Joseph understood. We are not under the power of another person. We are not under the power of what happened to us or our circumstances. We are under the power of a God who has everything under his power, including me and those against me, including you and those against you. You know, there's a lot of people in this city I don't like. Stay, I can't stand them. I don't want to be around them. I don't, want to be, I, don't want, I don't want to talk to them. I just don't like them. But I hold nothing against them. In other words, I forgive them. Well, if you forgive them, then you got to like them. That's not true. Nowhere in the Bible says that. God never said forgive and like them. He just said forgive them. See, we got it all wrong. We, 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 we make up things. We, we, we take God's word and try to make it more human for us to understand. But God said, when you forgive, just forgive. Move on. You don't have to be around these people. You don't have to talk to them. Now, when I'm around some of them, I'm cordial. Hey, how you doing? I'll even shake their hand. But I'm still thinking, I can't stand them. <laughs> and I know there's people in this city that can't stand me. I meet them. I get up with them. And you can tell by the way they look. Oh, here you go. I mean, I had a guy shoot at my truck one time. Yeah, I never whined about it. People had security at my house, at my daughter's house, my children's houses, all night long, because we didn't know what was going to happen until they caught him. And he was just mad, just, just thought he'd take a shot. I, 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 it, it happens. Life happens. But you know what? I don't have a victim mentality. And the sad thing about a victim mentality, eventually it blames God for all your problems. How can you serve a God that you're blaming? See, only God, his word, can move us beyond the pain, abuses, the betrayals that we've faced in life, that we've been victim to. He can and he will help you overcome them if you believe his word and will act on it. We must understand you can't really be a believer. I'll say it again. And hang on to a victim mentality. It doesn't work. They don't work together. Well, Pastor, I, I do have a victim mentality. I've seen, you just do, I've got all those things. Well, then you gotta recognize it. You gotta break it. You gotta say, God, forgive me. And God, today, I'm gonna begin to think differently because of your word, and I'm, you're gonna help me overcome. I have been a victim. I've been victimized in life. Most of us have, and some of us horrifically. One thing I respect about my wife, Cynthia, and some of you found out she's a little sarcastic because you don't hear from her much. And people always say, ah, you're so hard on you. You just say things. I said, I'm defending myself. <laughs> I mean, my wife likes to have fun. She's a little sarcastic. She can pop off. She can laugh. She's funny. She just, she, she's not, and she doesn't get offended. People say, well, I bet she got offended with that. No, no. I don't think I've ever said anything that offended her. Now, she'll shake her head at me and go, you know, I know that's when I get home. <laughs> but then she doesn't do anything. I mean, it's just, it's an idle threat, like, okay, whatever. <laughs> but what I'm saying is, guys, that we, you know, with, with, you know, my wife and I, we've had some horrific things happen in our life. But one thing I respect about her, she grew up in a tough home. Her mom was married five times. She was even put in the hospital because one of the men hit her, and, and she had asthma, and then her, watched her mom get beat. And if you ask her, she'll say, I had a great childhood. I'm like, what? But here's what she's saying. I'm not a victim of those circumstances. I'm not a victim. I was victimized, but I refused to have a victim mentality. Because what happens is, you will blame God for your faults and troubles as well. Everything is God's fault. Nothing's your fault. So to know Jesus is to know victory, though. 2 Corinthians 10, 3 through 6, from the English Standard, for though we walk in the flesh, we are not waging war according to the flesh. For the weapons of our for warfare are not of the flesh, but have divine power to destroy strongholds. This victim mentality is a stronghold, and you have to take the word so you can break it and crack it. Stronghold means a fortress, 
an impenetrable fortress in your thinking that you, that you can't get through. And only, the only thing that can get through to those things is the Word of God. And it's a strong word that breaks a stronghold in our thinking. If we'll recognize, acknowledge it, and say, God, forgive me. Help me to get rid of this mentality that's destroying your life and your world and your relationships. We destroy arguments and every lofty opinion raised against the knowledge of God and take every thought into cap- into thought captive to obey Christ, being ready to punish every disobedience when your obedience is complete. Any one of us can develop or have or get stuck in a victim mentality. Every one of us could. But I know people that have had horrific lives and they're the most positive people I know. They're just, they're just kind. They're, they're, they didn't let it seep into their thinking and ruin their lives. Yeah, I had it tough. Yeah, it was rough. Yeah, I was abused. Yeah, you know, we get it. You are a victim. But there's a big difference between being a victim or victimized and having a victim mentality. Huge difference. We will have troubles. We will have problems. You will. And if you come to God thinking you won't or God's gonna just take away all your stuff so you never have to deal with anything, you're just being deceived. That's not what God did. He had to get Joseph away from his family somehow. And even though his brothers intended to harm, Joseph said God intended it for good, and he did. And God used Joseph to save his whole family. If it hadn't have been for what his brothers did, that they, they, they meant for evil, that God turned around, his whole family would have died in the famine. And if he had adopted a victim mentality, which he could have, Oh, woe with me. It's all, all these people are bad, and my brother's a Potiphar, and his wife lied. I was in prison. I helped this baker and the butler, and they didn't even tell Pharaoh for three years later or whatever. I, I, oh! And his family would be dead. And how many of our families are going to hell? Because we won't break through that. Look at New Mexico. Beautiful state, isn't it? I love the weather. I love the state. I love it here. I don't like everything goes on here, though. It's because victim mentality votes in victim mentality people. So what do we do? What do we work on? As I close, we need to acknowledge and accept the past. It is what it is. It happened. Number two, we need to forgive. Holding on to grudges binds you to your past. It binds you to that hurt. Colossians 3.13 says, make allowance for each other's faults and forgive anyone. Listen to what it says, and forgive anyone who offends you. Remember the Lord forgave you, so you must forgive others. You want to hear a victim mentality in the church world? I don't go to that church anymore because so-and-so offended me, or this person came up and was rude to me. That's a victim mentality. So what? What does that have to do with God? Well, if God loved me, that would never happen. That is not true. God doesn't, it's like you guys think God has robots except for you. You're not a robot, but everybody else should be a robot. And if you call yourself a believer, you should be perfect, which is a lie. And I, I'm always shocked at people, like when my wife were in church, and church on the move, when we attended, when we were members, we, we had people leave. I even had a guy come to me and said, we're leaving, you should come with us. And I said, I, lo- I rebuked him. I said, buddy, I'm not going with you anywhere. Who do you think you are to even talk to me like that? You have a petty grievance, you go your own way. But as for me and my house, we're gonna serve the Lord. We don't serve you. Do you know why? Because I've been victimized in my life, but I've never had a victim mentality. I refuse that mentality. And people hear, oh, we went to this other place because they were mean to us. What sad people. And that's why you can't really be a true believer and have a victim mentality and hang on to it. Because eventually it's God's fault. If you loved me, if you cared about me, this would never happen. She wouldn't leave me, he wouldn't have left me. Yeah, but if you're mean, they're gonna leave you. (laughs) Why is that God's fault? Well, I could have did things better, then why don't you start doing things better now? Because a victim mentality won't ever acknowledge all of our faults, but it's quick to acknowledge everybody else's fault. And isn't it funny, the people we've done the most for in this church are the ones who attack us and will say they didn't do enough. You know why? Because they're never thankful or grateful. So you must forgive. It's not an option. You must. Well, you don't know what they did to me. It doesn't matter what they did to you. 
what they intended for harm, God can turn around for your good and his glory if you believe the word of God. You got to break that. Number three, you got to embrace the word. Embrace the word of God. What Joseph's brothers intended for harm, God intended for good. And when you walk with God, he intends everything to be turned around for your good. Even when we suffer, God always has a purpose for our lives. And so that's what we need. And so folks, if you have that mentality, you need to break it now. You need to get rid of it. You need to stop it. You need to just say, I've had enough. I hate living like this. It's always negative, always fault finding. You can find fault with anything because nothing's perfect. But can you see the good in everything? That's the question. I'd rather see the good than the bad all the time. I'd rather see the good than be critical all the time. And so we, we're breaking that today. Part of this message is to start breaking and pen, to penetrate that impenetrable stronghold, that fortress, and begin to put cracks in it so you can put the word of God in you and you can change your whole life with this one thing. Your whole world will be different because you'll see it different. And that's your choice. We all have a choice. But can you see your own faults? Can you see your own misgivings? Can you see your own sin? Or is it just everybody else's sin that you can see? Father, in Jesus' name, I thank you for being here, that we're breaking strongholds. That's what the Word of God does. And Father, people would take this to heart, and if they have the victim mentality, they'll repent to you today and say, God, forgive me. Today, I start working on it. I don't want to think like this anymore. I don't want to feel like this anymore. I know I was victimized, but I, I, don't, I cannot allow myself to have a victim mentality. And Father, begin to break it in our thinking, break it in our beings and our bodies and our minds that we can walk in true freedom. And Father, for freedom, you have to fight for it. So we fight the good fight of faith with the word of God that's quick and alive and powerful. And we break these strongholds in our thinking of poverty, the victim mentality. In Jesus' name, help us, God. Help us all. With every head bowed, if you say, preacher, would you pray with me? I walked with God, but I walked away. I want to come home today. You're right. I blame God long enough. I need to repent and get my life right. Or you're hearing you say, preacher, preacher, would you pray with me? I've never given God permission in my life like I should have never. I've prayed a prayer here and there, but never with the intent of following him. But today, I realize I need his help. If that's you in Jesus' name, all over this place, wherever you're seated, and you say, preacher, include me in your prayer right where you see it. Are you ready? With no hesitation, in Jesus' name, would you just lift your hand up? Say, preacher, include me in your prayer. Thank you, sir. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. God bless you. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you up there. As I look across the church, who else will join these? Thank you. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you over here. Thank you so much. Thank you up there. I see your hands. As I look across the top, who else? Thank you. As I look across the top, who else? Thank you so much. Anybody else on the top? Say, preacher, by the lifting of your hand. It's, thank you. you. This is the way you humble yourself. Thank you so much. Thank you over here. Thank you. Thank you. God bless you. This is how you humble yourself before the mighty hand of God. And he said, if you do, I'll give you grace. The victim mentality would say, I don't need to do that. I don't need to get right with God. I'm good with God. God knows me. Nope. Thank you. God loves people. And he's trying to give you an opportunity. Start breaking that stronghold now and say yes to the Lord. Anybody else? Thank you. Thank you, thank you. God bless you. Thank you over there. Thank you up there. Thank you. Yep. This is how it begins. Thank you. See your hand. Thank you. I see your hand, ma'am. God loves people, and he wants us to do better. But we got to honor the word of God. Father, in Jesus' name, I pray for each one. So many have lifted their hands this weekend. Because, God, I think that we realize that the time is short, and you're calling people and drawing them in, and they have to obey. Thank you for their obedience just to lift their hand and say, yes, I want you in my life. I want God in my life. And Father, thank you for breaking the stronghold of victim mentality in our lives and our thinking. Help us to be healthier spiritually, physically, mentally, and emotionally and be doers of your word. So if you're here and you lifted your hand in Jesus' name, I want you to pray this prayer loud with me right where you're seated, loud enough for your ears to hear your voice. The Bible says we believe in our heart and confess with our mouth. Would you pray this after me? And if you're right with God, pray it in support of all those. And if you didn't lift your hand, I want to introduce you to Jesus. Would you pray this prayer with me? Would you pray, God, I choose to believe in Jesus. And I believe he is your son. And I believe 
He's Lord of all. And according to your word, I believe that in my heart. And now I willingly confess with my mouth, Jesus, be Lord of my life. Thank you for saving me. Thank you for forgiving me. I choose you, God, and I choose your ways. Thank you for choosing me in Jesus' name. Amen and amen and amen. Let's thank the Lord.